Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. Many of you have heard for years that Monkey Shoulder is a great place to start if you're considering getting into scotch. And I still stand by that. I do think it's an okay place to start, but I do think that there's a lot of better options, and I'm here today to talk to you about six of them and the reasons why that I think are better choices to get into scotch than Monkey Shoulder. The first one being the Glenmore G10. Glenmore G10 is such an obvious choice for me because it's attainable, it's inexpensive, and it's tasty. It's got peach, uh, lemon, just general fruitiness on the nose, and those all carry over into the flavor as well. This is one that's going to challenge people's assumptions that all scotches have to be smoky. And that's one of the more common things I get when I'm introducing a new person to scotch. They're always surprised when I hand them something that's fruity and they're had no idea that scotch could do that. This is a great choice to start with. Next, we're going to go into actually kind of the exact opposite. We're going to talk Johnny Walker Black. Johnny Walker has the benefit of being such a household name that many people have already tried this one. So maybe this one doesn't belong on this list, but I think it still does. Specifically the Johnny Walker Black, because a lot of people end up trying the Johnny Walker Red. And unfortunately, they you know don't have a great experience and then they decide that they are just done with it. So in this case, I want you to get some Johnny Walker Black, because this is Although maybe a little thin to an experienced whiskey drinker, for a new whiskey drinker, this has a couple of very key things going on. Number one, it's 40%, so you're not going to burn your palate out on anything. And if you want to kind of drink it along with an ice cube, it takes to that very well. It's also got a little bit of smoke to it, so it will tell you whether that's a thing you enjoy. And if it is, good for you, you're already well on your way. If it's not, you'll get there, don't worry about it. But still, water it down a little bit, add some ice to it if you want. This thing takes all of that very well. Johnny Walker Black was my gateway into whiskey, and I think it can be yours. All right, next we're going to go into the Glen Fittick 12. Today, the Glen Fittick Distillery is run by the fifth generation of descendant from William Grant, who was the initial founder. It's also got one of Scotland's only on-site cooperages, and it's one of the best-selling, actually the best-selling, single malt scotch whiskey in the world. So... It's got a little bit going for it, but the reason I put it on this list is it's doing something different than what we've talked about already. This has sherry influence, and sherry, personally, it's kind of a favorite of mine, but what you're going to be getting with sherry influence is you're going to be getting kind of red berries or red wine influence as well. Oftentimes, you're going to get some fruit. In the case of this one, this one's very heavy on apples, but the cool part about this one is if you are a red wine drinker or maybe know somebody who is that you want to get into whiskey, this is a good one to start with. However, Consider adding a little bit of water, maybe an ice cube, dilute it a little bit. Just make sure that you are kind of approaching this from a point of view of not just burning your palate. You want to try this. You want to experience it. Make it taste a little watered down because then when you try it straight, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, I noticed all these different flavors I didn't get that first time. It's important to spend a little bit of time with a whiskey and if you don't like it immediately, try it a different way. Don't just give up. But in the case of Glenfiddich, I think it's a really good choice over Monkey Shoulder. Next, we're going to talk about the Belvany Doublewood. The Belvany 12 Doublewood has yet another new thing that I wanted to introduce you to. So the idea here is that you can double age your whiskey. So you take it from one barrel that has now taken a whole bunch of flavor and characteristic from there, and then you put it into another barrel and you age it for another set amount of time, whatever you decide. Now this guy, David Stewart, who actually works as the master distiller for the Balvany, he is the one that kind of came up with this process. And he happened to come up with it around 1983, which seems very recent considering how long scotch has been around. It took a very long time for somebody to say, let's take this and put it in that, <laughs> you know, a little strange, but regardless, this is an interesting whiskey and it will give you an idea of layering. And that basically means you're going to taste it. You're going to taste some stuff. And as it flows and as it waits in your mouth, it's going to turn into something else. Maybe it'll show up in the mid palate. Maybe it'll show up in the finish. Maybe it'll show up on your third sip. But this is the idea of layering. It can show you again a little bit more how complex Scotch whiskey can get. Next, we are going to talk about Highland Park 12. There's two different reasons that I put Highland Park 12 on this list. The first one is marketing. So it's important to know that there's a ton of money going into marketing with scotches. And that's because it's such a huge concept around the world. And people understand that scotch is very expensive. And if you want to be impressive, you buy the most expensive scotches that you can. So marketing has a lot of money in Scotland. But in the case of Highland Park, they've actually been able to keep their costs pretty far down. But they've got a little crazy with their marketing. That being said, 
this is a good bottle to try to convince people of because it's all based off of Vikings and Vikings are cool, right? So if you talk about this, this is the Highland Park 12 Viking Honor. And you know, that, that is what it is. This also has sherry influence. It's gonna taste pretty good. But the second reason that I'm bringing this one up is that it is salty. And salty is another flavor that we haven't talked about yet. Scotches can often have a salty flavor if they're aged kind of near the ocean or maybe they just happen to be in the right spot. But regardless, you're going to get some salty notes out of here, which are, again, very different. Doesn't necessarily have to mean that it's smoky because you do see the two together very, uh, very frequently. In this case, this one's fruity, but it's also salty. It's a little weird, but it's very good. All right, next, we're going to talk about Glen Grant 12. Glen Grant, just like everything else, has a reason to be on this list. And the reason in this one is not necessarily the taste, although we'll talk about the taste in a moment. It's when I think about whiskey and scotch especially, I like to think about the history and what makes the brand different. In the case of Glen Grant, it was founded by these two brothers and they ran it for a number of years and that's all well and good. But then they passed it down to their nephew and the nephew was a bit of an innovator and he looked at the stills. He just said, like, I want these to be different. And he elongated them. Well, he actually built new ones, but he built tall, skinny stills. And a tall, skinny still, assuming that you dial everything in properly, is going to give you a very smooth whiskey. And that's what this is. So this has apple pie kind of notes. It's apple, it's uh, honey, it's lemon, citrusy, it's got nutmeg in it. It just, it tastes like an apple pie if you stretch your imagination just a little bit. But most importantly, it's extremely smooth. And this will be one to share with people who might not think scotch is all that smooth of a drink. So, especially at 43%, it's got just enough to give you a little extra taste. It's not 40%, kind of that minimum that you have to be. So they really seem to care about this product, and I think it's worth including. Now, next, we are going to talk the Brook Lottie Classic Lottie. The Classic Lottie is on this list for a number of reasons. We're kind of doing a little bit of a cleanup, and this one covers a lot of the things I want you to try. So the Classic Lottie, let's just start, right? So this is a no-age statement whiskey, which means it does not have a number on it, does not have a specific year. This was made to a flavor profile. This was made on purpose is kind of what I'm saying. Instead of saying, well, this barrel is 12 years old, let's pull it and that's 12 year old, whatever. This was, hey, let's pick select casks, let's blend them together, give them time to kind of get to know each other and then put them in a bottle. And that's the flavor profile that we were looking for. Perfect. So that's what I love about this. This is introducing you to how a no age statement doesn't necessarily have to be a bad word. <laughs> you know, it doesn't mean, well, he did the minimum that we could do, but we can't really put an, uh, an age statement on here. So let's just put this out. In this case, it was done on purpose. Also, this is unpeated from Isla. Now, the island of Isla off the coast of Scotland is typically known for very heavily smoked whiskeys. Think Ardbeg, think Laphroaig, think Lagavulin. And all three of those are known for their smoky characteristics. This is made in the same place, just further north, but it's unpeated. So it's not going to be smoky, but it is going to have maritime flavors similar to um, Highland Park. It's going to be salty, right? It's going to be delicious. <laughs> so, and additionally, this one kind of goes a little bit further and goes to 50 percent ABV. Now you might be a little bit worried about that, especially as a newer whiskey drinker, but let me tell you, this one carries it like a champ. It doesn't taste like something that's 50% alcohol. It tastes again like something that was done on purpose. Now I will admit that I'm a little bit of a Brook Lottie fanboy, but it's because everything they make is really, really good. Now lastly, just because it's cool, the color of the bottle means something. This is supposedly the color of the water outside the distillery. And little stuff like that, again, marketing, I always think is interesting to learn about. All right, so that does it for this episode of the Whiskey Dictionary. I hope this has been useful to you. I hope that you go out and buy all six of these whiskeys. Honestly, go do yourself a favor, get them all. If you've never tried them, even if you're an experienced whiskey drinker, maybe skip the Johnny Walker Black, just because like I said, that might taste a little bit thin to you. But everything else is stuff that I drink fairly regularly. Actually, almost every bottle I showed you was a pretty much empty and the ones that weren't is because it's a new bottle. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this episode and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Cheers.